Hey everyone, this is Philip Zimbukwe, and as you can tell from the title, um, God freed me from porn. I was severely addicted to it. Um, this is a story that's showing you uh, freedom, right? Showing you that God really can free you or anyone else from such a very destructive habit. Um, it doesn't have to be limited to just this habit. God can free you and I from all sorts of habits that we find ourselves in. Um, I think, how do I phrase it? Um, let's pray so that we can like invite the Holy Spirit to speak to all of us and uh, hear what he has to say. Because Ultimately, this may be my story, but I know many people may come to that conclusion of this is this is him, right? I can't see myself free or this is him. God is not going to show the same uh, mercy or show the same uh, tact with my situation, whatever that may be. But let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the God who frees. Because, Lord Jesus, your word says it is for freedom that we have been set free. That we are no longer, as Christians, bound to uh, the things of this world, bound to sin, and we are now free to live as you intended us to live. Not out of obligation, but because we love you, and because you first loved us. Thank you, Jesus, that it is your kindness that leads us to repentance, that even in our disobedience, in our contempt for your ways and your uh, decrees that you have shown us kindness. And when we finally realize that your kindness is there, may you draw our hearts to turn to you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so that's just how it started. Um, I am I'm from Africa and um, we came to America in 2004, but Right now, I'm just going to map out, like, the areas of my life where I can remember, like, uh, lust or sexual activity uh, was present by me um, to other people. Um, so, in Africa, <clears throat> I remember, like, this is, like, I believe one of my first memories. Uh, we first got our TV, and there was a show on that TV that was very sexual in nature and i remember like looking at it and, and thinking oh pff, maybe we'll try it right and the same curiosity that you know many of us have experienced as kids i managed to explore and it was um it was uh, with a, a neighborhood friend that i explored it with um and on several occasions, um, some family members have told me like, oh, you know, we saw you doing that. And um, they threatened to tell my parents, but, you know, I don't know if they did or not. Like, well, I don't know what the repercussions were in those moments. But I remember just having that insatiable need to keep experimenting, right? Because sexual pleasure just feels good. It just sucks that I found that out so early and so began to explore it in very, very um, uh, non -god, non sanctioned, non sanctioned by God ways, right? <clears throat> um, as a disclaimer, I believe that God's design for marriage and sex is the best design because it um, it holds everyone to the standard of commitment and faithfulness between one man and one woman, because trust me, we all have our own issues and we can only handle one other person at such an intimate level. And if you explore that out of order, God definitely can still forgive you and God can help repair, but we should never seek repairing over preventing and discovery. We should never seek the opportunity to do it the right way the first time uh, at the expense of doing it the wrong way and fixing it and hoping it will turn out better later. But again, God 
is still in the business of repairing, as we see from the uh, the fall of man, right? Uh, Adam and Eve ate the apple. God knew they would do it, but he had a solution. Um, so at that moment, explored, watched TV, explored with a neighborhood friend. I think what makes it worse was I continued to explore not only with a neighborhood friend, but with cousins. And, you know, <laughs> It's it's so weird because you only hear this like in like you know in movies or jokes and whatnot, but no, it was um, it was there, right? They were curious, I was curious, and here and, and we explored. Uh, fast forward to coming to America in two thousand four, <clears throat> it didn't stop. Um, in two thousand five, I gave my life to Christ. Uh, my dad invited us, invited us to uh, his room. He was praying, spending time with God, and he invited my uh, family, uh, my siblings, I'm sorry, and a family friend. Uh, he asked us, do you guys want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Uh, before then, we had been going to church because he went to church, because you know our mother went to church, because we went to church. Um, I don't think we truly personalized our faith um, even though we knew of God, if that makes sense. So I remember that day being like, okay, let's do it. And being very legalistic in the sense that I shunned everything that I knew the word of God said was not good and shunned it when I saw it in people that I loved, if that makes sense. As if I did not have any faults myself. Because as I mentioned, when we came to America, it did not stop. The lust and the experimentation, it, it moved to a family friend, it moved to, um, uh, what is it, a cousin as well. Um, uh, and I had since apologized to both of those uh, ladies um, because w what I noticed was in my pursuit of pleasure, which is basically what it was, um, I realized the harm that I'd done. Not necessarily completely, but I knew that what I did, even at a young age, was wrong and worthy of asking for apology from them. Um, if you guys have managed to do this yourselves, um, I encourage you to reach out to the people that you hurt you know, especially if you have to see them often, and even if you don't have to see them, if God leads you to go apologize to that person, do it. It's freeing to you, it's freeing to them, and God can also begin to do the healing process in their lives for the harm that you've done to them, that they may not even know that that's where it comes from. And um, so I remember apologizing, and I remember, I remember doing those things, apologizing. And then in eighth grade, I had my first girlfriend and we, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're too young to, to know what love is. And it may be so that that was lust and infatuation. The damage is still there. Uh, we experimented as well. Um, and uh, what was it? We ended up, it got so bad that, because we went to the same school, it got so bad that when I wouldn't get this uh, activity and action from her, I pouted one day. And uh, that was not one of my proudest moments because, you know, it's forcing her to do something that she was not ready to do, that I was not even ready to do myself. And so, 2008, we break up. 2009, uh, sorry, 2008, we come together. 2009, we break up. Uh, 2008, that, uh, <laughs> sorry. 2008, we come together, only there for like five months. And um, 2009, I fall into a deep depression because of this relationship, because she had moved on and I, you know, I, I was attached because that's what that does, right? Um, sexual sin attaches you to the people that you engage with. Um, you're not 
off the hook. It's it's not a, the cultural lie is it's physical. It's not really just physical. You're doing something to yourself emotionally that is only reserved for marriage. Uh, for the person that you know that you are not going to leave and the person that you know is not going to leave because they see you in this bare bones form, right? Um, so fall into a deep depression because of the relationship. Uh, and mind you, I'm a Christian at this point, right? That's what, like, this was my vice. There's many vices for many Christians, right? As I'm pursuing God, this issue begins to continue, sorry, continues to rear its ugly head in my Christianity. So that leads to self-condemnation, to shame, to um, falling even deeper into these holes and more condemnation, more shame. By the way, that's where the devil wants us all. I heard somebody say this, like, you know, how long does it take you to sin? Right. Typically, 15 minutes, especially if it's porn, 15 minutes, maybe an hour. How long does it take you to to get over the shameful f condemnation that you feel after performing the sin? Maybe days, maybe weeks, maybe years. That's where the devil wants us. He doesn't really care about the sin itself. You know, obviously, like he wants us to continue to do the sin. But it's a self-loathing, self-condemnation, self-degrading, self-hating that he wants us to stay in because he knows we were made in the image of God and that we are, <clears throat> um, we're valuable to God that Jesus Christ died for us, right? So, so long as you don't know that and don't live in that truth, you will live defeated. I'm not saying I do this perfectly either because even right now, that's what I have to keep working through and reminding myself. But it still stands. The sin takes a moment, the condemnation takes days. And so I, in 2009, you know, I'm, you know, not chronically, I'm not chronically depressed, but I'm depressed. Like, I'm like, okay, I don't know what the purpose of my life is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And so I cry out to God. I'm, I'm like, God, I, I know killing myself is not an option. Right. It's not an option, just simply because it's not, I know my problem is not that big, but I know, regardless of how big the problem is, it's not the solution, right? And I tell God, I'm like, God, I don't know what to do right now, but I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm only holding on by a thread. I know I'm not going to kill myself, but I also know that there's... There's no point in going to that that lifestyle of drinking and drugs. I've seen and I've seen people preach about it, you know, and it, I I know I'm not gonna. I don't want to fall even into that mess to try and solve and mask this problem. So I'm just gonna keep holding on with this thread that I feel like you have me dangling on, because um, I know it's you know that's that's it. And so I hold on, and soon after I pray that prayer, God just does that miraculous work of being like, okay, he's fully surrendered now, let's move. Uh, during that time, my grades were slipping. I was holding on with my grades, but after that, my grades just skyrocketed. Um, my confidence skyrocketed. I began to dive deep into the word of God, and just every day I would read on the bus to school, or from school, sorry, I'll just read. And it was awesome, right? Um, <clears throat> I went to a college preparatory school, so uh, literally you're at school, you're learning a ton of stuff, you, you come home, you're doing tons of homework for like five hours, and then you just go to sleep and repeat. On weekends, I played a few video games that I loved for a little bit, um, and start all over it again on on Monday. So I did that for a few years, right, all the way to the end of uh, high school. Uh, during the summer, you have summer reading, so that kept you busy. 
um, and I guess just regular video games. I ended up in 2013 graduating from high school and that summer was the first summer I had without any obligation to school because I, was, I knew I was, I was heading into college and there was nothing that was on my table, on my, on my schedule, just prepare for college. So I found anime and we kind of know where this is going. I found anime, started watching a few animes and anime is not shy about sexual themes. Not really. In, in any anime you can find that there are those hints of it. And I remember delving into this one anime that was um, that was the springboard for my exploration of porn on the internet. Because <clears throat> um, I, I would stay up late most nights during that summer. Um, I went to England and I came back and I knew school was starting. So jump, you know, I uh, was struggling with that. I was like, okay, I gotta stop. Um, I, well, I knew that I was, I, um, what is it? I believe I had a prophetic word that I was gonna meet my girlfriend in college. And I began <laughs> that search in college. I was like, yes, we're gonna do this. Like, this is not only what we're here for, because, you know, I'm here to get a degree in civil engineering. I found my purpose uh, at some point, and then, okay, I'm going to school for civil engineering. But um, I knew that, yeah, like, I gotta start seeking my girlfriend um so started seeking here there and there uh, but my exploring with um what is it with uh with anime i think exploring with regular porn grew my college years especially toward the tail end were the most intense in terms of me exploring porn than than the beginning, right? I remember, like, I would do it like right in front of my roommate at one point, um, but because of the way our beds were angled, he wouldn't know. I remember one time he commented, "He's like, dude, you're up so late," and he was up too himself. So it was like interesting, but. Um, he knew I was a Christian, but he didn't know that this was my struggle. Then in 2014, I went to STP, which is summer training program with the navigators. I joined the navigators like immediately after I got into college. Navigators really helped solidify me in my faith and in my understanding um, of what it meant to be a Christian. <clears throat> they really broke broke me down because I remember earlier I told you legalism was my epitaph for quite some time and that was because I knew what the law of God was but I had this secret sin that I was trying to hide and thus projecting the frustration that I had with not being able to control this on other people because they weren't able to control themselves in whatever I saw their blatant sin was and <clears throat> i went to scp i decided to um what is it before scp i was like i'm done i'm so tired of this of porn so that was one motivation I'm, I'm just tired there has to be a solution another motivation was if you guys have been to camps like Typically, that's the stereotype, right? A Christian is going to be struggling with porn, and especially a Christian male, struggling with porn. They're going to go to camp, and that's everyone is going to be raising their hand for that. I wanted to be that guy that did not raise my hand for that. Like I had found the solution. By the way, um, I'll, I'll continue the story. So I, I find this website that helps with people uh, dealing with porn addiction. Uh, called mychainsaregone.org. 
I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and read that. Um, it's done by a few pastors and um, and their struggle with porn. And the solution that they found was the reason why all people are struggling with lust and inevitably porn is because they have a wrong view of the human body. The human body is made in the image of God. God does not make, God's not a pornographer. So the beauty that you see in the human body is beautiful. The problem is we take that beauty because we don't know how to appreciate it. We take it and it goes to lust, right? We think the only way to appreciate a beautiful person is by lusting after them. And that was the assertion and he went through pulled out some Bible verses to help understand the basic premise that a person that's naked and you seeing them naked does not automatically mean that you need to lust after them, after their bodies. He gave the example of doctors. When a doctor sees you naked, it's very inappropriate if you if they show signs of lust after you. You know that they're there to take care of your body, to, to preserve it and to make it uh, work right once more. So why can't we as people have that same view, right? Um, very beautiful website, highly recommend it. There's an audio, there's a few audio tapes or um, messages on there that kind of summarize uh, these topics. And um, so again, find that, go hard at like just, because it's a heavy read as well but just go hard at reading it and internalizing as much as I possibly could before I go to the summer training program. I go there, I try and start like spreading it to people and be like, hey, this is a solution. I get shot down a few times and people just like predicted were struggling with the same sins themselves, right? And I was trying to give them the solution and they're finding a few holes here and there and I think one hole was like the guy was like realizing how effective the website was but he didn't he didn't feel like it would work and that's something that the website tries to point out it's like you know you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and i can attest that even after uh, reading this website going through the summer training program which was a program that helped us dive into prayer and reading the Word of God and understanding and studying the Word of God um, and evangelizing the Word of God um, taught us all of that and to go forth into our campuses and preach. And so the go back to the campus and you would, and I remember this thought, which, wow, I can't believe, um, I, I can't believe the thought, but uh, I remember thinking, because I, I, I had not done it for, you know, not masturbated, not uh, looked at porn for quite some time. I remember thinking, wow, I miss that feeling, right? I think I was, I was missing, to pinpoint it, I was missing the pleasure that that gave me, right? And I, the only way that I knew how to, um, to get that pleasure was through masturbation and the only way to masturbate is through, uh, effectively is through porn. And so I remember thinking that, like, I miss that feeling. And I just dumped right back into it. That was the year that my life began to spiral in terms of academics. I was on a scholarship. And from that point onward, I fought to keep that scholarship because I was slacking in grades. I was... I was doing great, but like one or two classes were, you know, failing, but the other classes were, you know, either, either really good or not. Um, so I'm fighting to keep my scholarship, doing everything that I need to do to get to keep it up. Uh, fast forward a few years, 2016, 2017, 2017? 2018, let's just jump to 2018. But mind you, I'm also trying to keep find my my girlfriend who, at that point, my mindset's like, okay, I don't really want just a girlfriend just for the sake of having a girlfriend. I want a wife. Um, 
it was that desire for a wife ultimately led me to definitely continue watching porn and definitely continue to seeking a, a relatable partner but it also led me to uh, to be involved with a married woman we were emotionally involved not physically but it doesn't really matter because the emotion is what ties people together the sex is what just helps people stay together um, but that emotional tie was hard to break and is what God used to break me 2017 that's when I got involved 2018 things started falling apart you know I'm sitting here trying to the one of the reasons why it was hard was because that person's marriage was falling apart and um, I would self-proclaim my I, I how do I phrase it I and they're also not Christian yeah I made it my mission there we go I made it my mission to save their marriage while also trying to save her um, her as you know to, to make her become a Christian but right my premises were off one this is a married woman should not be involved in this way um, and I got to the point honestly where you know her marriage began to fall apart um, and I made it I, I, I got to the point where I was like you know this is this is who I'm supposed to be with right if she ends her marriage I can be with her and one of the reasons why that like began to even stick into my mind was I remember how I entered college I'd entered college with the goal of finding my girlfriend and at the tail end of college I was leaving with that you know thought like you know this is the only person that has given me any um, of the attention that I've been seeking um, <clears throat> And, you know, in my theological understanding, what is the one thing that could, you know, could allow a married woman to be married again? It's either death or divorce because of infidelity. And, you know, not just with me, infidelity, but with, you know, if there's infidelity in their own marriage. And so I'm justifying it. I'm like, okay. This person is going to be with me. Um, and God uses that to break me and to cause me to realize that, <clears throat> you know, these are the real issues that are going on in my life. And to fast forward to 2019, um, I'm still watching porn periodically um, whilst also kind of interacting with this with this woman. Um, in 2019, I remember like I was so heavily involved in prophetic words. And I remember like one of the prophetic words was, you know, God is about to move in judgment those people who are against him. Right. And I remember thinking, you know, because she was always the woman that was pro prophesying, I remember her saying like oh you are you know you know you're a christian you are god's chosen you're fine but those who are walking in disobedience to god and his purposes and his plans those are the people who are going to get it and i got afraid i was like i and what really scared me also was i think one thing that she pointed out was those people who are going to be judged by God are going to miss out on what God has for them. That's ultimately also what scared me because I was like if I'm stuck in porn and God doesn't want to give me my wife because I'm stuck in porn or lust and whatnot right? I'm going to miss her. So for fear of missing that opportunity of being with my wife I'm like okay I'm just going to let's start this, this fight Lord. 
And one of the prayers that I, I prayed was like, God, one thing that I'm realizing that's causing me to fall is I, I want to do this, right? I, I know it's wrong, but I want to do it, right? I do the things that I don't want to do and don't do the things that I want to do, as Paul says in Romans 7. I'm like, God, if you just take away the desire, I'll be fine, right? Because I have that understanding that this is wrong, but I have that desire that's conflicting with my understanding. Take away that desire. So he took me through a, a process of removing that desire, right? The way you kill something is by starving it. But not in my own efforts, right? Because I had already tried to do this. Like, God, I'm just, I'm not going to do this one more time, right? This, this is it. I'm done. I'm done. No. It's like, God, I can't do this, right? I can't magically kick the desire out of my life. Um, but I need your help. I, I, I genuinely need your help. And so he helped. Just like before, when I, when I was depressed, and I asked like, God, I'm holding on by a thread. Help me. That's when he helped. I relapsed a few times. I had accountability from my sister, um, who, who showed me that yes, the things that I had done in my past you know, may have laid that foundation. But at that point, it became a choice. Right? I knew the truth. I just needed to walk in it. And once I started realizing that, like, okay, I know the truth. All I need to do is just walk in it. And if I need help, ask God. You know, be accountable to another person. Um, those things helped. Periodically, I go back to the website, <clears throat> right, and be like, God, help me to appreciate women in the way that you appreciate them. Help me to love them in the way that you love them. And even this, to this moment, like, lust is the is the battle that is, um, how do I phrase it? It's more subtle, right? No longer is it expressed through watching porn although the devil has like you know fought to reclaiming that area um, other areas that he's doing it is through social media right you have you're scrolling through you see a very attractive woman your default is lust and so what do you do with that right you can't have that extremes of cutting specific people out um, <clears throat> or how do I phrase it? You you do the extreme of cutting people out, um, or you. Um, I'm trying to understand how to how to phrase it. Yeah, like you just you you take active steps. I think the next thing that I will need to do is go back to the truths that I understood. That, that really did bring freedom to me. Um, not just from physical porn and masturbation, but you know, where Jesus says, if you look after a woman and you lust after her, the thoughts that you have in your mind, those can be conquered too, right? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, as Ephesians 6 says, but against the powers and rulers and authorities of, and, um, and spirits of this world that are unseen. And, you know, Paul says, we take captive every thought and bring it unto the obedience of Christ. Um, and we demolish every argument. I definitely botched that, but I know that's in um, Corinthians. I think it's Second Corinthians 10. Um, but what one thing that I noticed through this entire ordeal, right? This is, I don't know how many years of struggle. Romans 2 4. It is the Lord's kindness, the Lord's kindness, that leads us to repentance. If you read the context of that verse, it's like, you know, do you not realize that you're showing contempt 
for God's like patience um, and just for God just not bringing upon you the judgment that you deserve and at the end it says it's the Lord's kindness you not realize it's the Lord's kindness that leads you to repentance and initially I, I didn't and then when I did I was like God <laughs> why how why why am I still here that's the question I ask God why am I still here right especially the the stuff that I've seen right so if you're struggling I pray that that's your your realization moment that if you're a Christian there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and God has set you free not is going to set you free from sin he has set you free it is for freedom that you have been set free tell someone that you trust it's not going to sugarcoat your issue and your problem but they'll actually seek to help you um, and pray earnestly that God actually takes away the desires that so inflate our our emotions and our feelings like ask him to to give you the will to do and to act according to his good pleasure as titus says right it is god's grace that gives you the will to do and to act for his good pleasure <clears throat> and so yeah pray this really helps let's pray father we thank you for today lord thank you jesus for this moment for this time that I'm with my brothers and sisters. I pray, Lord Jesus, as we, those who are struggling with porn, those who are struggling with lust, those who are struggling with things that are very, very shunned upon in culture that they don't want to say, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you may give them people that they can come to and run to that will not judge them, but will see them toward healing. And Lord, thank you, Jesus, that in Christ, we have been set free. It is for freedom that we have been set free. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us and you're for us, that you're not against us. If God be for us, who can be against us? That we are the righteousness of Christ right now, even with all of the sin and mess that we knowingly and unknowingly do thank you jesus for salvation that if any of my brothers and sisters have not accepted you and surrendered their lives to your lordship jesus christ may they simply say god i am a sinner and i need a savior i have broken your law and i need someone to pay it off i can pay it off by myself but that's eternal separation from you and hell or I can say, Jesus, your payment satisfies. Thank you, Jesus, and accept you and your payment for my sin. And God, may you pour upon them the Holy Spirit that is going to teach them to do your will and will guide them in your way and will lead them to a fulfilled life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, hopefully you guys glean from this and go ahead and comment go ahead and share this with somebody on your wall um because you never know who is struggling let's begin the conversation um and like this so that we can show more people this story of freedom for not just me but for everyone that sees that god is here for them it is the lord's kindness that leads us to repentance it is for freedom that you have been set free you will know the truth and the truth will set you free